Hi there. I wanted to make this somewhat short video about uh, finding your internal validations. Uh, a lot of time when we go through life, we fear the opinions of others. We are afraid of criticism. We are afraid that our family and friends won't like us anymore. Or if we have loved ones around us, we're afraid that they might not love us anymore if we speak our mind, for example, about the wrong topic, or we, you know, we come out as a right winger in a, in a family of Democrats, for example, this could get you in trouble. People would dissociate from you. A lot of people live through life with an intense fear of being ostracized from their family and friends and so on. To be excluded from the social world is or used to be uh, pretty much a death sentence in the past. If you were expelled or exposed from your tribal community with the 25 people you always lived with, then it could be very troublesome for you to find another tribe to join. You'd be on your own. Other tribes might be weary of you like, hey, why did your tribe expel you and why should we accept you now? What have you got? What's wrong with you? You, you immediately receive a stigma. So it's all, it's all very natural for human beings, even modern human beings, that we take some care in how we speak our mind. We don't want the whole world to turn against us, to be hated. But it also means that the great majority of people that we meet in our lives are like that. They are people who are tremendously sensitive to external validations, uh, insult, praise. Uh, it can be negative and positive, right? It can be uh, uh, to be welcomed and loved or to be excluded and hated. But these still are all external validations, whether it is winning a prize at an Olympic contest or whether it is being scolded at by your teacher. What is the problem here? The, the problem I'm trying to get at is this. What happens if you let your fear of negative external validations control your life? Then you stop being yourself. You become another person. You become a socially accepted person. You become a person who is loved. That's nice. You want to be loved. I understand that. But you play the role of, say, uh, the good son, you play the role of the good employee, even though deep down inside, there must be this nagging sense in your mind like, oh, why can't I ever speak my mind about something without having to be afraid of being ousted or, or, or rejected? So the fear of rejection when the man approaches a woman and, and she dismisses him and like, you know, you know, the way women can, can reject men can sometimes be very, very painful, especially if you were expecting a positive outcome and all of a sudden it's, it's not going to happen. But these fears of the external world, they imprison you in a way, in a, what we in Dutch call keurslijf. It means you're being straightjacketed into performing a certain role that isn't the real you. What would happen, however, if you decided to live life in a very different manner? What would happen to you in the modern world if you started speaking your mind? Well, we know what happens. It happened to Andrew Tate, for example. He lost even his email account when, they finally, when he finally became popular online, when he, became, when he went viral, so to speak, on the, on the podcast network. Uh, they shut down his email address even. He had to apply for a different kind of email address to continue emailing people. Um, so we know what happens. We know that in the modern world, there is a modern version of being ousted, of uh, ostracized by society. In this, in this case, it is you're being rejected, um, canceled by the social media companies who've decided all at once that your words may not be heard, your words do not contribute to their what their profit bottom line for some reason. That's a bit that's a bit odd, of course. You could have also chosen to monetize Andrew Tate and say, okay, we're gonna embrace this guy so that we can reach his following and maybe, you know, be of benefit to them commercially speaking. 
But I, well, what I really wanted to get at now is how do you do it? How do you develop a very different attitude toward the world and at least show this, the kind of bravery that Andrew Tate has shown that he was not afraid to lose his platforms, meaning he was not very much concerned with the external invalidations and external validations. He couldn't really care less about people who don't like him. That's a good attitude. I believe you cannot be a confident person if you don't say to yourself, there are things I believe that are truly important to me. There are things that, that motivate me internally. The internal motivations I have, meaning um, for which I seek internal validation. Now, okay, so what is so different about internal validations versus the external validations or invalidations? A internal validation means I go to the racetrack to improve my personal best, and I do it just for that. I don't do it for applause, and I don't do it for the booing. I do it only because I want to better myself. I want to improve myself. I want to be the fastest. I want to have my fastest personal time today. And if you find that this goal also motivates you to try to, to achieve this and, and, and improve on your personal time, then you have found an internal validation that is also your internal motivation. And when these things align, you've reached nirvana, perfection. Let me try to think of some other internal uh, validations that can motivate you. In my personal case, for example, it is this speaking. When I'm at rest, sitting on a couch, you know, thinking about things. My mind is never really asleep. I always think about things. I often feel this, this need, this desire well up in myself, the desire to express myself verbally. I like to tell people what I think. I want to uh, tell people what, what my beliefs are, what new insights I have found, especially if I've been thinking about a new topic and, I, and it really interests me. And I, I see through it and I find all sorts of new insights about this. Then I have this desire to tell people about it. In fact, that's what this video is about. I want to tell people something that is my internal validation. I feel validated simply by making this video. Mind you, I can handle a million people disliking this video. I could shrug it off quite easily because I have already been validated by myself. My internal validation means I can just make this video, do the, do the speech I'm giving to you for 10 minutes or 15 minutes or so. I feel validated and that is why I keep doing it. Imagine that, that doing this speaking would not uh, deliver me my internal validation. If I would only do it for the likes, the positive likes, and if I would fear, almost tremble in fear for every dislike I get then very quickly I would either get bored doing this and I would stop or I would become so afraid of the dislikes that I would feel ashamed or maybe even guilty of doing this and then I would also stop. The fact that I can keep doing this regardless of how many people dislike my words and irrespective of how many people do like my words, I can keep speaking on and on and on and on because it validates myself internally. And uh, in my case, I also derive great motivation from this. I want to get up and work on my new microphone installation and improve my video skills, and improve my post-production skills. I am motivated to keep learning these skills and keep pushing them a bit further and further so I get better at it and I can start producing better quality videos. And I do it because I find internal motivation and internal validation for it. Now imagine that you would live your whole life in this manner, that you would live your whole life pursuing internal validations, no longer fearing external invalidation and no longer seeking or desiring external validation. Then you become almost godlike. Uh, I don't think that is even pretentious or preposterous to say. 
I believe that if you pursue your internal validations, that means you look within what is here, what is in my mind, what is in my heart, my soul, my being, what truly resonates with me. And if you find these things, I believe that is the only way to truly become successful in life. Take, for example, take for example Mike Tyson, the boxer, the boxing legend. Do you think he would have taken all those blows to his head and his body if he had not felt some kind of internal motivation, an internal validation to keep fighting on? Right? You can't do those things if you don't have an internal motivation derived from an internal validation. And with Andrew Tate, I suppose, his validation is also that he just likes to speak his mind regardless of the fact whether or not people like what he has to say. He says it anyway. I no longer believe that in our modern society, at least, it is truly dangerous to pursue your internal validations. I think if you, va if you do pursue your own heart, your, what your heart and your mind and your soul, what those things compel you to do, I believe it is better to lose a few friends and win great personal victories. And I think it would be a very, very sad thing to hold on to a few friends who don't really care about what goes on inside you, who don't really care about who you really are, who you really are trying to be. If people can only be friends with you, so to speak, if they can only be friends with you on the condition that you do what they want you to do, on the, con on the condition that, they, that you keep behaving, uh, the Kirk's life, as, in, as we say in Dutch, if you keep fitting yourself into the straitjacket that society has given to you, then you will fail and you will fail miserably in life. You will be depressed. You won't enjoy waking up because every time you wake up, you know, oh, I can't really be myself. I can't really pursue the things I care about. I cannot do what I really want to do. I just have to pretend I like my job. You can't live like that. And I believe... Um, if more and more people would look into their hearts and start pursuing the things that they really wish to pursue, I think the world would change in a very radical manner. People would simply stop being afraid of other people's opinions. <laughs> That's the advice we always give each other. Like, you know, what do you, what do you care what other people think? Well, I actually do care what a lot of people think. But it's not going to stop me. It's not going to stop me from pursuing my, my internal motivations toward my internal validations.